This is Crispin Freeman, and you're listening to Whelmed, The Young Justice Files. Recognized, Uncle Walker, D-0-1. Recognized, Emily of Arden, D-1-2. Hello, team, and welcome to Intel update number 12. And we've got quite a bit of Intel this time. <laughs> you could say that. You could say that. This is Rich, of course, and I'm here with Emily. What's hey, up, everybody. Emily? <laughs> yeah, we're just going to dive in because there's stuff. <laughs> there's stuff. San Diego Comic-Con was last weekend. I do live in San Diego, um, so I get the chance to go, which is great. So uh, in addition to producer Neil, we also have uh, editor Richard Kreutz Landry, who does work on the show, and he was able to join me at Comic-Con over the weekend, which was fantastic. And so he and I got to get into the panel. The, well, actually, he did not get into the panel. This was the thing. That, that room was at least half the size of what it should have been. And it was definitely about, it was definitely half the size of last year. And last year didn't really have much. And this <laughs> okay. year they're, we're putting a trailer up. So I have to say, um, I was pretty disappointed yeah. and confused. So yeah. I think the thought process might have been that I think seeing photos of it last year, like the room didn't completely fill up last year when it was huge and they didn't have too much to promote. But, you know, this year they had a trailer. They should have planned for that. <laughs> There were, I, from what I understand, I wasn't outside, but from what I understand from talking to people, there was at least the same amount of people outside yeah. waiting to get in as there were in the room. If somebody who was outside can correct me if that's wrong, but that's the information yeah. that I got that's afterwards. The setup was a little bit strange, too. We were in, uh, myself and Eric Lopez and Cameron Bowen were up in this reserved seating space, which was really nice for them to set up. But they set the reserved seating space up right in front of a big black curtain, which is where people would like Greg and Brandon and, you know, they, they came in, you know, from the green room and they would be behind the curtain and then they come from the curtain up onto the stage, which is great. But they yeah. only had one screen yeah. and there was uh, some people from Warner's and uh, DC Animation like uh, in the reserved area. And then it was like Cam and me and Eric and then... Um, some other people from DC Animation, and I'm not convinced Eric or anybody past him could see anything from that position. It was just a very, it was just a weirdly set up room, I guess. The people were super nice. They're the the gray shirts, the guy, the the people who have the yes. like security, not security, that but happens. they set the rooms up and stuff. I spent some time talking to them because, <laughs> well, they're staff, but they're staff like I guess assigned to a room. They have a specific name. They called themselves gray shirts. Staff. I'm like, <laughs> I looked at the guy and I was like, well, at least it's not red. And he's like, yeah, I know, right. <laughs> So you don't <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyway, um, Cam and Eric were coming down from LA, but they were stuck in traffic, <laughs> and so I almost couldn't get them in the room. Like, you know, they. I was like, I, I had to run up to the door. I was like, guys, we have two voice actors from the show coming. Like, they're out here somewhere. <laughs> they're <laughs> and, out here and, somewhere. And Eric, they're out here somewhere. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So they ended up calling for them, and they they'd come up to the door, and it, it was just, it was, it, it, yeah, it could have been bigger. Um, yeah. I had several several friends that were in line to get in that could not get in, um, and that was a bummer. But having said that, they pretty much released the trailer to the public while the panel was going on. I think it was about yeah. four to forty minutes into it or so. I think uh, Entertainment Weekly re- uh, released an article with the trailer in it, so they were pre- they're prepped and ready to go. You were you were still live tweeting when I frantically ran to my computer because I couldn't get it open on my phone. It just wouldn't work. I was like, okay, time to it is time to sit down and watch this. It is out yeah, in the world. Exactly. Yeah, which is really cool that they set it up so that it could be yeah. out. In the public yep. because um, it was pretty great. So yeah. we also got uh, artwork that had posters that they had that they were signing at the WB booth. I can talk about that in a little bit and some other stuff. But we also got some other announcements. So the, the link to the trailer, if for some reason you haven't seen it 20 times already, uh, we'll put the link to the trailer in the show notes for this episode. And you guys can go check it out. Um, like if, but then we got some other... Like, if you're listening to us, you've probably seen the trailer. But if somehow you <laughs> <Probably>. haven't... <laughs> right. We'll break down a little bit of it in a bit. 
Um, but it, it wasn't at the, the, the panel. They answered, they answered some questions. And actually, you know, when I go to these cons, whether it's Gen Con or, or San Diego Comic Con, Sometimes the fan questions are a little like, ooh. Yeah. Um, these, the fan questions were, were pretty great, awesome. and they didn't have a lot of time, but everybody was really cool. They did speak about the international release, and they just had no information <laughs> on that in this particular panel. I mean, it was it was Greg and Brandon, Phil Barassa, um, St- Stephanie Lemlin, Troy Baker. And, yeah. uh, so, and somebody wasn't there somebody else? There was the, dir- there was the, the voice acting director. Like their voice director, I think, was there too. Oh, J- uh, yeah, Jamie Thomas. Yeah, sorry, Jamie. So yeah, he was there too, and uh, and then it was. I didn't know. I didn't know the guy who was hosting it. I think he is maybe a YouTuber or a podcaster, but I, I don't. I don't know who it was who was hosting that. So yeah, it was pretty cool. It was fun. It was fun seeing Troy Baker. Like he was really. You could tell he was a big fan, <laughs> and he was really excited about being a part of the process, awesome. which was really cool. I'm sure the panel's online. You can go watch it for yourself, but. Um, that was pretty cool. But there were a lot of, obviously, there were a lot of DC Universe related announcements. Um, they had the big DC Universe experience thing, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but they finally gave us, uh, they didn't give us a technical release date that I have been able to track down yeah. sometime, maybe next month. Um, I think they've but said they did. fall. <laughs> They're like, fall. They said fall. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But yeah, but they did give us, they did give us how much it was going to be. And yeah. I don't know. You and I and Neil had a long conversation about like, so <laughs> yeah, about the whole pricing. So basically, we situation. should probably, if people don't know, because this, I feel like this might have slipped under the radar more than the trailer if people weren't on the lookout for it. But uh, DC Universe has announced that uh, the service will cost uh, seven ninety nine per month or seventy four ninety nine for an annual membership for one payment for the whole year or seven ninety nine each month. And apparently, if you pre-order an annual subscription before the service actually launches, you get your first three months free, which means that an annual subscription would cost 20% less than a year of monthly subscriptions for that first year. And I tried to do the math to figure out exactly what it is. I think it's closer to like $55 or something like that for the full year. I'm not a math student, so I was getting numbers confused. (laughs) That's okay. Um, I would do it in my head, but I can't right now. Yeah. I'm too tight. I yeah. have things. But, but it's something anyway. like that. You can do the math yourself if you feel so inclined out there right. listening. Yeah. But that's that's what we know about price right now. And they haven't delved too deeply into what the service will actually be beyond like the series we know will be released. And uh, we know there's going to be comics. We know there's going to be movies. We know there's apparently going to be shopping and like forums but what form all right. of that will take, we don't know yet. Hopefully yeah. soon. <laughs> yeah. We're pretty sure, and I have to say that even talking to the Young Justice cast and crew that I was hanging out with, I mean, we're assuming that the first two seasons of Young Justice will drop in there immediately. That would like, make sense. <laughs> it would make sense because, I mean, okay, if you're going to have the season three come out, you know, uh, in 2019, yeah. hopefully first quarter, <laughs> I'm hoping, <laughs> Please. Uh, you know, it, you at least have the first two seasons there for people to binge watch while they're, yeah. while they're doing that. And hopefully they'll, I don't know what they'll do. They'll do like a high, you know, some kind of uh, maybe 4k high def, <laughs> you know, remastering of stuff and they're pretty high def you know, maybe already. some, maybe some extras or whatever. So um, hopefully we can hope, but we don't know if there's comics I like the, the comics are they're gonna have comics on they're going to have a curated right. library of comics they have not announced right. a full list of what will be available but it will definitely be it won't be like marvel unlimited where it's everything it'll probably be a much smaller selection i'm thinking just based on how they've talked about it but we don't know for sure yet yeah and we're can hope that the young justice comics are going to be on there as well <laughs> We can hope. I mean, <laughs> we can hope for a lot of things. I don't know who's. I don't know who's controlling this list. So that would be great if they would do that as well, because they're really hard to get a hold of. Like you can get them on Comixology, but the hard copies are they just they're just right out. Don't exist. Right out. I think they're technically all out of print at this point. Yeah, I think they are, and they're pretty expensive. When I've looked yeah. up to try and buy some for myself, yeah. I just could buy some for my nephew, and I was we are. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. So, we were talking about this behind the scenes. Like, there's some ups and downs, right? So, 
you know, seventy four ninety nine. You get the twenty percent off with the advanced thing. I think Neil did the math. It ends up being like six something a month, which is like for me. I'm like, oh, that's fine. But I'm also, you know, like a, a middle class adult. So we're talking about like people like college students like yourself. Yeah. Who were fans of the material when it came out and was technically the target audience of the material when it came yeah. out. Well, like, I mean, it doesn't sound like a lot to some people, I guess, but like $75 a year it's, is a lot. It's to a drop. pretty big chunk. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm I'm gonna get it. I need. I have to get it for for this for everything. So it's not like I'm just gonna skip it or anything like that. But I do know I have friends that probably will. That'll probably be like I can't afford that because I know a lot of people are just are genuinely just in it for Young Justice and they can't be like yeah I'm right. gonna spend seventy five dollars to get one season of a TV show. That's that's a bit much. Yeah. Which which I mean sucks. the trailer the trailer on YouTube it hit like 1.5 million views in the first like 3 days. Yeah. No. So, yeah, there's a lot of people. Yeah. So, even though even though I think that it's a reasonable I, I think it's a reasonable subscription price, the downsides are it's going to be really hard to get new people in. Yeah. So, it's behind a, it is behind a paywall and I understand the need for the paywall because you have to have the paywall to pay for the seasons to actually happen in the first place. Yeah. I'm all on board with that. There is a downside though and the downside is when when they were on Netflix, most you know a lot of I think there is a a, a higher percentage of kids and young adults whose parents are already have Netflix or Hulu or some subscription service that they already just have for a bunch of other stuff and then they could yeah. dive in and be like, "Oh, I heard about the show. I'll check it out." So uh, the number of people I could suggest this show to and just be like, it's on Netflix was like I was getting tons of people into the show. And it, yeah, absolutely. And it I just, mean, it was, it it was the driving me. force behind the paywall the frustrates yeah. me, even though I understand exactly why it's there and exactly why we need it and all of that. It just it's frustrating. And I hope I hope that the rest of the service is worth that price is all I'm really hoping for. I hope that right. the rest of the service is as high quality as like what we're seeing from everything involving Young Justice to kind of justify that price for me and for other people like me who are kind of like, that's that's quite a bit for, for us, yeah. for one service, for one very specific thing. Right, exactly. And they did have, but they did have the big DC Universe experience thing there. Yeah. So they had, a, they had a thing promoting Swamp Thing. They had a thing promoting titans titans got their trailer released gosh what else was there harley quinn was there yeah. um, <laughs> i was seeing many many actually... a video from the harley quinn chaos room <laughs> oh really because i didn't go in that one no. so we we went in the dc universe experience thing i went in the 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 court of owls thing <laughs> it was super short it wasn't very long and scared the bejesus out of me. You sent me like, the video and I was like, oh, it's a good thing oh, I yeah. wasn't there. I would have deafened oh, yeah. you guys. I would have shrieked. <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought Richard was going to shriek behind me. He was the one taking the video. So, like, I walked out. I was like, why am I in front? <laughs> I was like, it was me and Richard and uh, Curtis Kohler, who's one of the casting directors for Young Justice, and Brandon Vady and his wife. And I think that was it. I think it was the five of us. They'd split our group together. So Greg and Jamie Thomason and, and Cam and Eric and we're all in the other group. And so I was like, I was in front this time. We sent, we sent, this is terrible. We sent Brandon Vietti's wife, who was so nice guy. <laughs> we sent her first through the swamp thing. <laughs> like, cause the swamp thing was like, a, it was like, it was like a haunted house. Like it was really cool inside actually. And we're just like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll send her first. Yeah. So she just went through. And I was like, you get two choices. There were these rocks you could walk along through the swamp and might be safe. Don't fall off the rocks. Or you can go along this safe path around the outside. Everybody went on the rocks. And I was like, hey, no, I'm not going there. So I just walked around. I walked around the safe Me. side behind like the, the guide because I'm terrible at these things. So we were through. It was really pretty cool. The Swamp Thing thing was pretty cool. Um, but then we went into the, the Court of Owls, and I think they all just did, were like, no, you're going first this time. And I was like, ah. So I'm going, I'm in. Curtis Cole, oh, Curtis Kohler was up first. He was trying to take a video, and he's like, somebody else has to go. I'm taking a video, and I was right behind him, so I had to go. <laughs> so it was like one of those weird, like, shrinking hallway things, yeah. and then I, like, turned around a corner, and there was this, there was this mannequin of Talon, who's the assassin for the Court of Owls. Yeah. 
and it's kind of leaning against a wall and I'm looking at it and I'm like, that's, is that a person? Is that, <laughs> I, is that a person or is that a mannequin? And I stood there, I stood there for a while and I was like, I was watching this guy and I was like, it got to a point where I was like, all right, well either one, it's a mannequin and I'm an idiot or two, this person's really good and I should probably just keep walking. And so I kept walking and I kind of was looking behind me, but I didn't see it move. But then that's when Richard Landry, Richard Groots Landry walked up behind me with the video and the guy came out. The guy started walking and I was like, whoa, because he leaned himself in a weird way with his feet up and it just didn't look like yeah, a as, human. As someone who has worked in oh. haunted houses, like, yeah, that's that's how it goes. He was that he or she, I'm assuming it was a he, but I mean, not moving. <laughs> absolutely stock still like like professional street like I, i'm gonna be a statue kind of level person it was super impressive and then of course as i'm paying attention to what's happening behind me i then turn around and then there's two like court of owls people with the creepy owl masks on that yeah. are all white and yeah. featureless and they're just kind of cocking their heads at you and getting really really close and i'm just like there's nothing okay about any of this I'm out. I got to get out. Oh I'm just, God. I just kept looking at him going, I'm just walking through. I'm just walking through. <laughs> and I just kept walking through all the way out the door. It was I'm creepy. just having flashbacks creepy cool. to the haunted houses I've worked. Cause like, that's just the most wonderful thing ever. Uh, it was I, creepy. I, it was creepy. Fun insight. Cause I wasn't at Comic-Con, but fun insight into Emily's life in acting and whatnot. I literally, while working a haunted house at one point, had I was getting late in the day, it was getting late in the night, and I just completely messed up my hair and had covered my entire face. And someone walked by me. I was in like rags. I was just like this weird shambling thing sitting on a bench. And like a grown man walked by me, and I just growled with like my entire face covered. And he literally screamed at the top of his lungs, "What is that?" <laughs> and I had to try really hard not to laugh. So yeah, uh, fun yeah. fun anecdotes from Emily because I didn't it I don't fun. have Comic Con experiences <laughs> to share. I was impressed, but particularly by the Court of Owls and the um, the Court of Owls and the uh, Swamp Thing thing. Yep. It's pretty. I mean, these are haunted house kind of level things yeah. in a very tiny area. Yeah. So they like. I think that I was impressed with those. I thought those were pretty. Cool. Uh, I don't know um, if you saw the, any. Did you see any of the Harley Quinn Chaos Room stuff? Or I, I didn't see any of so, it. Um, we we did the Dick Grayson room, which I'll talk about in a minute, and then the Young Justice experience. But I missed the. I skipped the Harley. So room. I wasn't there, but I did see quite a few Twitter videos of people sharing what they did. From what I can gather, <laughs> from what I saw of this, I'm pretty sure what they did for the Harley Quinn room was they'd set up a room that was kind of like an Arkham cell and had like Harley specific graffiti on all of the walls and everything. And you okay. basically, you went in, they handed you a baseball bat and they gave you 30 <laughs> seconds to just do whatever you wanted. And basically it was what? all of the videos I saw where people handed a baseball bat, go in and just got to destroy this room. <laughs> It just had like props you could just like knock off of things. There was like a fight mannequin that you could just attack. And it was called the Harley Chaos Room, I'm pretty sure. Whoa. And I'm like, that's both a wonderfully simple concept for your interactive Comic Con event and also kind of terrifying. I do remember hearing, overhearing a conversation. I don't remember who it was, but somebody was like, do you want to go to the Harley Room? I don't think it was anybody in our group. I think it was somebody who was standing. Do you want to go to the Harley room? And I did remember somebody saying, like, I can swing a bat at home. <laughs> and I was like, what? Like, that, what? Like, I no, it could not register what that could possibly mean. But now it all makes sense. Yeah. Um, that's That's what the few videos I saw looked like. I was like, this is wonderfully crazy i i can't believe that this this like that was the idea someone came up with and everyone in the boardroom went yes that will do that but people yeah, were having fun with it people were having fun with uh, it. apparently yeah the 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 titans dick grayson thing was interesting i thought it was a really cool concept they, it was kind of like an escape yeah, room yeah. almost so we went in and there was a police detective there Another thing I want to give a shout out to is all the actors that were acting in these things were really good. Like the the, the creepy guy in the swamp <laughs> who was like your tour guide in the swamp. Like we walked out and I looked at Curtis and Curtis looked at me and he was like, that guy was really good. <laughs> like that was that guy, like his accent and his mannerisms and everything was like, we're in it. It just made you feel like you're in it. It was really impressive. Shout out so to working actors. Hat, 
Yeah, shout, shout out to all the people who were doing that. And then the police detective guy who was there. So you walk in and it's Dick Grayson's apartment. You find out he's a police detective, right? Which is kind of implied by the, the trailer. But the other detective says, hey, you know, I needed some backup, needed some fresh eyes. You guys got sent. Look around the room and see if you can find any clues that, that you know, Detective Grayson may have left behind. And so you're looking around. There's all kinds of stuff. I got some pictures. There's like a notebook that's open that's got like a handwritten description of Raven from the trailer. And um, there was just some cool stuff around the room. And then um, I can't remember. Who, I think Jamie Thomason noticed that there was a bunch of files and the files had letters circled on the files <laughs> and, uh, had, you know, that kind of stuff. And you're looking at that and we're making and the word was circus. <laughs> and then there's a picture of the flying Grayson's like um, circus poster on the wall of his apartment. And you like flip that over and, you know, you get this blue light thing and it's, you know, this black light or whatever. Yeah. And it shines up some numbers, which is the code to the the safe. And so you open up the safe and there was a remote in it. And then the remote opened up the wall for a TV. And then the TV had the trailer for Titans in it. Ah, I was like, and then did the TV just have the trailer or the TV just had the trailer? <laughs> TV just had the trailer. And then uh, at the end, at the end, the police detective was the guy. The actor was pretty funny. He was like, so uh, looks like uh, Detective Grayson's been making some questionable life choices. at night." <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I laughed out loud. I, it was really fun. The way he delivered it was really funny. <laughs> so, yeah, he's like, "Yeah, it's time to break for lunch. And then you like walk out of the room. So it, it was a pretty cool experience. Um, I, I, you know, I have, I have some I have some opinions on the trailer, but the but the experience itself was actually really pretty cool setup. I didn't quite I didn't know what to expect when we walked in and what they were going to do with each thing, but the idea of having like a detective-y like thing in an escape room for Dick Grayson was pretty rad. I thought it was cool. And then there was the the Young Justice experience part of it, um, which is pretty funny. We I think I posted some pictures. So you you walk into one section of it. Uh, well, first when you right when you walk in the door. On the left-hand side, there was basically like, like a poster thing, and it was uh, the souvenir room Aww. in the library from the mountain. Aww. So you could see like you could see like the little sippy cup and Cheshire's mask and stuff, which was really cool. I tried to get a picture of it, but it was really dark and it was kind of hard to get a shot of it. Um, I thought of you as soon as I walked in, though. I was like, oh. And then <laughs> uh, and then there was this big room, and they were showing bits and pieces of the trailer. Yeah in the room uh, it was a big circular room that had kind of a funky lighting thing and then there were all these ipads and then it was a thing like which which team member are you and then you go and ask a bunch of ask a bunch of questions and it pops up with whoever you are and who were you and uh, it was it was just really funny i'll get to that <laughs> it was just really funny like taking a picture of like cam or eric or greg like intently to, like, poking an ipad <laughs> right well po poking an ipad but it's like all right cam which member are you and I don't remember who he got. I don't. I don't remember who he got. I have to ask him. I was Arrowette, and I was like, "Oh, I'm purposefully answering Nightwing questions." But I think, <laughs> I think they're they were like, "What's your favorite color?" I'm all blue. I'm like, "It's gonna be blue, right?" Like, "What's your favorite accessory?" I'm all cool belt, <laughs> belt, right? But I, I got Arrowette, which is cool, which is really. <laughs> were those the actual <laughs> yeah. questions? Kind of. I'm paraphrasing, oh, but yeah, like, yeah, I love it. Where love would you it. Where would you set up a base or something? I mean, so I'm sure it's probably going to be on the DC. Might not have been an option. It might have been it, exactly like it might have been like all the new characters type thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's what it was. <laughs> you're, but it was you're also still our first. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Quiz was wrong. I'm so, I'm so not white Nightwing, but I want to be Nightwing. <laughs> um, so the. But it was the first glimpse we got at their like designations and yeah. stuff like that, which was kind of cool. So people were popping. I think, uh, I think Arrowette Sissy was B twenty seven. Want me to pull it up? I think. Uh, no, it's it's okay. And then, uh, but there's like a like Tracy thirteen finally has finally come up. I've seen some other people posting their experience, and I think you can get to that on DC Universe soon, if not now. Oh, I hope so. Um, I hope they. I hope they put that up. I want. I want like. It's cute. Old, it's really I want cool like old thing. school like DisneyChannel.com quizzes on DC Universe. <laughs> I want that. Yeah, uh, that was pretty cool. And then uh, then there was another part of it, which was like a photo photo booth thing. With that, um, the with the designations and the quiz and all that, the two things because mm -hmm. I just wanted to pull it up real quick. The two things that have had people going, uh, just 
like fan theorizing all over the place is that Halo's uh, designation designation is a G and uh, Katana's is a Z instead of the usual B for team members. So people are like, oh. what does that mean? I think Cam was Halo because hmm. Zara, the voice actor for Halo, was with us and she came over and she was just so excited. <laughs> she is adorable. I love her. She is so excited to be a part of this. Oh. She'd see pictures of her character. You can see pictures of her like on Facebook and I think on her Twitter feed too of pictures of her like she'd like run up to the posters and like do the pose. <laughs> she was so nice. She was just so fun. Oh, that's, um, that's amazing. And I think she's got in addition to Young Justice, she's got um, so a bunch of other stuff I guess that's coming out pretty soon too. She just, she couldn't be specific but she just said like it's one of those times where she'd been working on things for the last year or two yeah. and they're all like coming out about the same time so um you know if you like her as halo there's going to be a bunch of other stuff that she's coming out into apparently so keep an eye out for that and uh and she was greg mentioned that he had so here's a here's a thing here's a very here's a call back to my 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 call to action of participation (laughs) zara was a fan of gargoyles and met greg i guess multiple times at gargoyles gatherings when she was younger and at some point, Greg was doing one of his, you know, read aloud things, um, one of his scripts, and asked her to come up and be, participate as a fan. And she did. She did Eliza Maza in one of the Gargoyles related things. The radio and place. Got, yeah, the radio place. And like she did Eliza Maza and he told her, you're really good. <laughs> like you... Is this something you want to do? And she was like, well, maybe I'm thinking about it. And I don't know how old she was. I'm guessing 15, 16, 17. I don't know. But she that she was telling me the story when we were up in the, whatever, the Warner Brothers loft thing while everybody was signing. She would, she got a chance to sit down. I got to talk to her for a few minutes. And she was saying that she she just participated in this thing. And then she went to college and she you know did her stuff. But she moved to Los Angeles kind of because of the voice acting thing with Greg. And through participating and being a genuine fan and being supportive and being kind. And, you know, he asked her up to do this thing. And then suddenly now she's in a bunch of shows. <laughs> so I'm not saying like, if you participate, a bunch of great, amazing things are going to happen. But my, my, if you don't participate or if you participate with a bunch of negativity, these opportunities aren't going to show up. Like they're, they're just not. So I don't know. Love the things you love and put that energy into it and go out and participate in the fan spaces and, you know, do, do your best. <laughs> it's a pretty cool story. And she's really fun. I, all I could think of the whole time was like, I wish Emily was here. <laughs> I think Emily and Sarah would get along smashingly. <laughs> I think you guys would be hilarious. Um, she was really, really thoughtful. Maybe, um, maybe next year. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, maybe. Oh, and I got to meet Sarah. Uh, sorry, Sarah. I just said Sarah on the brain. Um, Stephanie Lemlin's husband, AJ that Jason Spizak talked about, about the level 47 black belt and Krav Maga or whatever. I had a whole different picture of that guy. I was like this gigantic human, <laughs> you know, this football player like crushing. He's really nice. <laughs> He's a really nice guy. I don't think he was much taller than me, actually. He was just ripped. You could tell. But he was, he was really nice, and uh, he's been listening to the show. <laughs> So he was telling me about listening to the show, which was pretty surreal. Yep. Talking about yep. enjoying the show. So that's always, that will never not be surreal. Yep. I um, I was not San Diego Comic Con, but I, at my, at the con I go to every year at Kineticon, New England's oh, right. premier pop culture convention or whatever their slogan is, <laughs> right. and got to meet Vanessa Marshall, uh, voice of Black Canary. And that, that was surreal. <laughs> That was surreal in and of itself, who also listens to the show and was very excited. Uh, It will never not be a crazy experience Mm -hmm. that I was able to walk up to her and just say, hi, I'm Emily from Whelmed. And she immediately was like, oh, my God. Yeah, you. Yeah. Every person I met, like, it just was amazing to me. Trey Baker, we got to I got to talk to him for a few minutes. We were talking about um, he didn't know the story about Jason at least I was trying to figure out what he knew and what he didn't know. Cause he, Cam was talking to him and then he brought me over because there was a, uh, something, some, they were talking about Jason Todd and how Jason Todd was people called in to die <laughs> to kill him, yeah. called in to kill him. 
And I, I think he didn't know that that was a thing. And so I was trying to explain what was going on at the time and how he's different and how Red Hood is great now. But somehow I think it was confusing. So I was like, you know what? We got a whole episode. Just I'll just send you the episode. Yeah, but, you know, we asked him if he wanted to come on the show. He said he'd love to. So everybody was just so nice. It was just really nice. Got a chance to talk to Phil Barassa personally, finally, too. He was really cool. He was like, I love Christopher Jones. So... I was like, how could you not? He's such a we, nice guy. Like, like we were, so do we. <laughs> we do too. Same. That might have been me saying, I love Christopher Jones. And he was like, he's such a nice guy. Yeah, he really so, is. So that was really cool. Everybody everybody was just really nice. They were super excited, obviously, that the show was coming back and that there was so much support. And and then I think they had like 50, 52, 52 interviews <laughs> or something um, between the panel and the DC Universe experience thing that we that we caught up to them for. And there, I'm seeing them pop up all over the place. Greg was like, well, I said, did they have you do some interviews? He was like, uh, yeah, a lot. <laughs> Scores. Yeah. And he had asked me, too. He said, I thought you guys were going to do a press pass this year. And I had to, two things I had to explain to him. One, me getting passes into con is, is not a big problem. Me getting a press pass is a few more extra hoops that I have to jump through. Yeah. And I had a lot of stuff going on, so I just didn't end up getting that done, which is kind of a bummer. It would have been nice to at least get them recorded. But it sounds like they did a lot anyway. But then also, uh, you know, we're active in the role-playing game community too, and there were other things going on there with the role-playing game community. So yeah. I had touched base with some some people from a little show called Critical Role that a few people may have heard of. Possibly. Which was uh, really cool. Uh, a little bit random. Tallison, uh, who's one of the actors on the show, and I have known each other for about 20 years or so, but we haven't seen each other in probably 10. And so I was able to, <laughs> we were just sitting in the hallway, and Richard Richard said, he looked up and he was like, isn't that Matt Mercer? And he was like 10 feet from me. And I was like, oh, it's Matt. And I got up and like, you know, went up and said hi, and we have a mutual friend, so I just said hi and congratulations or whatever. And asked him, asked him if he was interested in coming on some of the role-playing game podcasts we know. And he was just, not surprisingly, he's just, he's really nice. But then Tallison was standing there too, who I hadn't run into in a long time. And so he and I got to, to chat for a while and touch base. And he was so funny. I mean, both of us were looking at each other like, where are we? And what is <laughs> happening right now in our lives? It's crazy. Oh, and funny enough, I, so I was telling him about the podcast. And he was like, oh, I love it. I was telling him about my morning, which was at the Yo and Guess's panel. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh, I love Greg Weissman. And I'm like, yeah, me too. And so we were talking about that. And then I was talking to Greg with the DC Universe thing. And I mentioned Tallison. And he's like, I know Tallison. I'm like, I, I, that's what he said. And he's like, oh, he did voice work for me like 20 years ago. And I think Greg and I met Tallison. It must have been like the same year. <laughs> uh, anyway, weird asides. Yeah. But it was great. And again, with the participation, you just show up and do stuff. And it's... you know, you go up and say hi and talk and... It was nice to have Matt like remember me and our mutual friends and talk and he gave me their contacts and information. He was just so nice. Like that that kind of PR level of, you know, presentation to the community is something that can't can't be overlooked. Like they always just seem so nice to their fans. And that's I don't know. It's a great example. I think it's great. So um, let's see yes. what's on to the next thing while Emily's dying. I'm fine. Um, I'm fine. I just I just love Critical Role a lot, guys. <laughs> I just I just really love Critical Role. <laughs> yeah, at some point I think Richard was uh, was tweeting at uh, our Whelmed production team. He was like, "Oh, and Rich is talking to Talison now, or something like that." And Emily was like, "What is I, happening?" I believe I just sent I was, back and I, I knew they were going to be there, but I'm like. Yeah, they're always at Gen Con too, but I never get to see them. <laughs> like they're like they're they've got a crazy production. The fact that they were standing like we've been sitting in the hallway. It was me and Eric Lopez and Richard Crutz Landry while Cam was doing something. We're just sitting in the hallway because we're exhausted already for after like five hours, and we're just <laughs> he just looks up and Matt's standing right there yep. with the whole team. Yeah, it was really funny. I believe when you told us, I just sent back all caps gibberish because I. <laughs> could not formulate like remember. a reaction to being like w wait you're that but they it's what <laughs> yeah <laughs> you did what now well, in addition to critical role talison's also got a comic book related the show, wednesday program. club i love the wednesday, yeah, the wednesday club exactly. i don't get to see it as much as i would like to but i do love it every time i get to catch it 
so we talked to him. I was, I of course, I invited everybody who I was like, if there's anybody on the show that's a that's a Young Justice fan or a DC Comics fan, just let us know. We'd love to have him on the show. And he was like, I, you know, I've got this comic show that I do every Wednesday. I'm like, dude, I'd, I'd have you on the show in a heartbeat. <laughs> So I'm hoping that we can stay connected. I just know that they're, I got to send an email to their PR or their HR. I don't know what it is, what, what it's called. Their event coordinator. With their new, their um, new studio and everything. Right, exactly. And see like what they want to, what they want to do or what their schedules, their schedules got to be insane. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. It like, is. I'm, you know, I'm hoping we can figure out a time to interview, but like they've got to be nuts. And so you got to respect that too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah, we'll we'll try and make it happen if we can. Hopefully, I'll just be able to get up to LA a few more times. <laughs> but outside but, of all of your wonderful Comic Con experiences, uh, did we get a did we get a trailer? Is that something that also happened this? I think weekend? there might have been a trailer. There might have been yeah. a trailer. I might have I might have <laughs> screamed and cried while watching it. Uh, oh yeah, I did. Any anyone who saw it on yeah. Twitter knows I cried. I broke down during the recap part because it just finally hit me that I'm like, we're getting a season three. That's a thing um, that's happening, and I just started crying. Stephanie Stephanie Lemlin cried during the recap. I also may have, <laughs> during may have like cried the during like the screening during the during the panel. Yeah, well, they got done with the trailer and stuff. They were like, asked her a question. I think you can see it in the. You go go watch the panel. I need to watch the panel because I think I think after after that they asked her a question. And she was like, "I just need a minute," <laughs> something like that. She's just like, "I'm like, I'm feeling you." Yeah, I think I was I was trying to live tweet and I was crying and watching that and like I just yeah yeah it's crazy yeah. like really this is ridiculous every time Rich every time yep um every time anyway. The thing that one of the things that I was thinking of before we got this trailer was this idea that even though the animation was, I thought I loved the animation in Young Justice, but it's still five, six years ago. And so things evolve over time. And so I was like, huh, I wonder if it's going to be echoey of the original, if they're going to go with something a little bit newer, or interesting, or are they just going to clean it up a little bit? Like, what's it going to look like? What did you think about it? I think when I talked about it, I had talking about it online with you and Neil. I think I said something where I was like, it's not bad, it's just different. And it's my brain mm. kind of trying to catch up to it of being like, oh, this is how things look now. And the more times I've watched the trailer, the less jarring it has become. Uh, but oh, like, interesting. So you, so back first, up a little bit. So you found it was jarring the first time. The first time I watched it, I was like, Artemis looks different. And it's one of those things where it's like, it's just subtle enough that the first time I saw it, I just went, this just looks off. I was like, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't, it looks like Artemis. I was just like, but it looks like Artemis just like slightly to the left. And I'm like, what, what's happening? Huh. And it's just like, everybody just looks a little bit different. Like, I think I sent you and Neil at one point uh, when I was trying to explain it. Cause Neil was like, what do you mean it's different? I don't see any difference. And I just sent him two shots of Superboy, one from season two and one from the trailer. And I was like, it's just slightly off. And he's like, yeah. oh, now I completely see it. But he like hadn't right. noticed it when he'd watched it. And it's one of yeah. those things where I just I've seen I've seen this show way too many times to like not notice this stuff. Right. Um, so I that was that was you know I I liked it, but I also noticed that was like oh this is cleaner. It's kind of cleaner and something more like I don't know cleaner is the right word. Yeah. Like it's it's one of the, it, like I can't pin down exactly what makes it different. It just looks yeah. different. And I think the only it, thing I've been able to like come up with is that it looks more like all of like the main DC animated movies, which always kind of like, which always looked similar to Young Justice, but distinct. Like Young Justice had this style and now I feel like it looks more in line with the DC animated movies, which again, isn't a bad thing. It's not a bad style change. It is just a style change and my brain is still trying sure, to yeah. catch up to it a little no, bit. No, and that's that's what I was asking. That's why I was asking because... I think I, I'm I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, Artemis, Artemis is older. Like she's got she's yeah. a little bit older, she's a little taller, she's just a little bit more maturity of some sort to like her face. Um and then same thing with Dick, like he's taller. Like he is tall <laughs> when is, now. When will like, Dick Grayson stop growing? Like boy. I don't know, but like I, I keep for, I, there's a shot of boy. I don't know if it's like forced perspective, but I'm like, Dick is like towering over Connor. <laughs> yeah. And, right, that was, and I'm that like, was the shot of I'm like, okay, wait, 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 guys. right. I'm like, wait, okay, Connor, Connor's always going to be 16. Okay, I got that, but like, it just made Dick look really tall, yeah. um, which is not a problem. And then I think there, there's a scene. Uh, there's also a scene where Ar 
I have to make assumptions really because they're not in costume, but I'm assuming it's Artemis and Dick because yeah. they kept showing Artemis and Dick, you know, like at an airport and doing other things, <laughs> standing next to each other. And I and once again, I'm like, I don't. It's like how many how many blonde tall. how many half Vietnamese blonde female archers can there be in this one show? I'm pretty sure we can safely <laughs> it, assume that was it, Artemis. Probably, yeah, yeah. But there was like, yeah, I don't know. And I don't, and here's the, the, I mean, we've been talking about this, but the fact that there's timestamps and like, like, so say it's, say it's two to three years later, which is kind of our guess basically right now. So two to three years later, Billy Batson's 18. I have never in my life imagined Billy Batson as anything other than like 10, right? So now I'm just like, oh God, they're like making up new stuff. Like, I don't imagine Dick Grayson, like, maybe mid-20s or whatever, but I have a hard time, like, with 30s or 40s, like, he's going to be getting to. So it's like this idea that they're, you know, creating this new stuff as time moves forward is so interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I I liked it. I liked the animation. I liked that it, I thought it, I thought it emerged smoothly from the pre-reel to the, to the new stuff. It looked modern but still like young justice and it wasn't anything drastically different yeah so to and me. i think and i think the like the difference in the animation style is even less noticeable when they're in costume it's like when they're not in costume it oh, it hits me more like it looks more but like when they're in costume when they have the masks on and everything i'm like yeah that looks that looks almost exactly the same it's when they're not that i'm like mm, wait what <laughs> yeah you know what actually that's a really good point. That just occurred to me too. Yeah, and I just we pulled see, up. We see Dick out of costume a lot in this, in this trailer, yeah. and and anytime we saw him, I mean, we almost. Oh, I, I don't, don't think know. In I don't believe two I don't know the we ever do. No, I don't think in season two we ever see him out of costume. But even in season one, and I can't believe I don't remember this. Do we ever see him without his glasses? Yes, and a oh, we see him at the school. At the school, that's for sure. And uh, when he's playing basketball with. Bruce. Oh, that's true. When he's doing the acrobatic thing in downtime. <laughs> okay, so we do see that, um, but like even then, like yeah. so yeah, that's true. And I and just then, I just pulled up my comparison shots that I had sent both a, that I'd sent you and Neil when I was talking about it that was Connor season yeah. 2 versus Connor in this. Right. And I think I've kind of pinned down what like the one detail <laughs> that they've kind of changed with everybody is is that, <laughs> that at least from this and I think I noticed it a bit in the trailer is that in the facial designs for everybody they gave everyone more distinct cheekbones which adds shadows to everyone's face that make everything more distinct and like more realistic but it's like it's such it's such a minor change that like once you notice it you're like oh that's what's different about this like i am looking at these two photos and both are like connor at the same angle and one his face looks like it's lit completely differently just because they added like a line for his cheekbone on the side of his face and we I'm should like, put a spoiler warning on there because I don't think I can. I'm going to be able to unsee that. <laughs> yeah, that's so interesting. I'll have to go it's back like and take little, a look. It's little things like that. It's like that, yeah. like slightly adjusting character models because yeah. they're modernizing the animation and trying to make things smoother. And like, well, really, again, the, the most not a bad the most thing. Shocking, the most shocking thing about all of that redesign was the fact that uh, Deathstroke doesn't have a ponytail anymore. What? I'm, how I'm just how kidding. in the world? I and I with this. You, we should watch the panel because Phil Barossa and, and Brandon had to get into it because I guess Brandon told Phil he's like I don't think he needs a ponytail and Phil's like this is great or something and he's like okay, <laughs> Brandon was right. Leave, I don't know. You got to watch the panel. It was really funny. Leave the ponytail. Like, well, be. Leave the ponytail. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, let's talk about let's talk about the trailer. Let's a talk about the trailer because so, I had another thing I was so, going to say, but it's about the trailer. So we'll get into the trailer. That, let's do that. So. So here, well, here's here's a thing that was mentioned in the in the panel that should be kept in mind for this trailer. Yes, Greg said the first seven episodes are in the can. Yes, and the others are like well on their way. Yes, well that's fantastic. And like once they start the process of all this, then it it goes relatively quickly, relatively. But that means the sizzle. I reel mean, is by only default, yeah, from the first seven episodes. This is the first seven episodes. So all the stuff that we're seeing is only first seven episodes, which is, holy, wow. A (laughs) A lot's happening in these first seven episodes. So there's some implications, like Dick saying, like, okay, there's this, we we, we learn about the metahuman trafficking ring, which we knew was going to be a thing. 
we know that we saw a picture of Geoforce, so we assumed that Markovia was going to be involved. So it's, you know, we see that Markovia has got specifically this metahuman ring going on. But then they made implications, or not implications, they showed that Princess Terra, who is the little sister of Brion uh, Markov, who is Geoforce, was kidnapped. And it says on there she was kidnapped two years before, and they suspect it was because of metahuman trafficking. So the jump is at least two years. Yeah. Probably not more than three, but like at least two years. And we're going to get Terra. At some point in time, Terra is going to become a part of the storyline. <laughs> And anybody who's got a Teen Titans knowledge or Judas Contract knowledge or watched anything, you know that goes really well for everyone. Yeah, there's no problem. And everyone's no super happy about Tara being on the team. Yeah. So <laughs> it's I'm interested it, to see how ever they... Nothing goes wrong. No right. one ever cried inter- while watching Teen Titans on Toonami <laughs> right. because Tara and everything and her breaking that, Beast Boy's heart. I, like, I don't know. that. I like that Tara. I have to be... Like you can have the, your feelings about, about the Teen Titans cartoon. But like for a lot of people, no, no. me included, that was let that me, was let me finish. Her introduction. Let me finish. Sorry. Let me finish. Sorry. <laughs> the nineteen eighties Judas contract, rereading it, as you can hear Cat Cool and I talking about, is rough. <laughs> it's rough to re to reread that. Like my emotional memory of that is not the actual things that happened. Yeah. So so I have to say there's that, and then there's um Tara has showed up in some other things, but I think the Terra storyline in the Teen Titans animated thing, as much as I say it's not really it's not really my favorite. Yeah. I thought they handled Terra really well in that. And I liked yeah, she <laughs> broke Beast Boy's heart and that was a thing. And like it was I don't know, it was like, wow, this seems to be like almost like a more responsible way to handle Terra. There is some really questionable stuff happening in the original Judas contract. Yeah. So I'm interested because I so I've you, never I read it, but that, I know. <laughs> like yeah, I know. I know that <laughs> it's rough. Yeah. I know that Terra I know I I mean, it's Greg and Brandon. <laughs> They're gonna do something with Terra and it's probably going to be pretty interesting. Yeah. That's my opinion. Yeah. Like they're gonna they're gonna have done a little tweak, make her make it applicable to the show. Maybe it's a bit of a spoiler, but I don't know how much spoiler it is. But like, you know, oh, and, and they may play with our expectations and tweak them like yeah. they did with Artemis. So I don't know. It's, it could be anything. Yeah. So there are metahuman trafficking and Dick implies. He's, <sighs> yeah. Dick gets Connor <laughs> Sorry. and Artemis. Dick gets Connor and Artemis and Black Lightning together and makes a comment. When it's all over, we can just go our separate ways. It's almost like he's like, look, can I get your help for five minutes? Yeah. Let's just take care of this business in Markovia. We can just go she back to being so not hang, not hanging out. And I'm just like, what is going on? <laughs> no. Okay, they're all doing their own thing. That's kind of cool. They're growing up. Like, is Connor still like in the team because he looks 16? Is he like a mentor now? Is he in the league? Like, it looks you know, like, like there's he has a lot of his questions. Own apartment, which makes me smile. Like right. based oh, off yeah. of context, and Wolf, clues. Wolf like attacks somebody coming in the apartment. There's a bunch my of favorite, theories. My favorite th- fan theory for that for that one shot because every shot of this trailer has garnered a fan theory is that it's Wolf attacking Nightwing who like broke in in the middle of the night. <laughs> broke in the apartment. <laughs> and Connor mm. like wakes up and is like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> right. Well, what's Why interesting are you here? if that if that is the case because that other shot of the two of them where Dick's like towering over Connor, <laughs> I think that's in his apartment too. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. The, what's interesting is that Artemis, as Tigris, snuck into right Mount Justice and put a collar on Wolf, and he didn't care. But Dick breaks into Connor's apartment now, and Wolf is like, "I'll have none of that." Interesting. If that theory, there's so many theories, guys. We're not going to go through all of them. There's so many uh, out there. But that's kind of how we end up starting. And then you know, once we kind of get the basis of what's happening and the fact that Prince Brion is told that he has the meta meta gene and that that's probably why his sister was kidnapped. He says, I've got to do something to stop this myself. And so in the actual comics with him, there was a, um, God, what was his name? Baron, something ridiculous, Baron Bedlam or something (laughs) was trying to, yeah, that's what it is. I think Baron Bedlam. I know. Right. So (laughs) guy named Baron Bedlam had killed their dad and Brion's older brother, took over and was king, but he was fighting this internal civil war or something with Baron Bedlam, and so Brion just gets this scientist to, you know, give him superpowers. They didn't have the whole Metagene thing back in the day. So that's kind of the original story about that, but it's it, not surprising, I guess, but, like, so there's one shot where Artemis is looking at um, two guys, and then she's got, like, the contacts that scan them and get facial recognition, and, and it's, it's Brion, Markov, and his brother Gregor, 
And I think it says Crown Prince or something because we already saw that his dad's still alive. Yep. So I'm wondering if if like Savage is going to be in the light or going to set up some kind of thing where they end up assassinating his dad. And but they, there's also the scientist he's talking to, and the scientist's name I looked this up. It was Helga Jace, is the scientist who gave Brianna's powers, and I'm thinking that's probably her. Like, and she's going to be the one that maybe triggers his metagene and and sees kind of what they've got, can which I, is interesting to me. Can I make a side comment about Artemis's contacts? Oh sure. Because <laughs> with those, like the first time I watched the trailer, like it didn't sink in like what was actually happening in that, and I had a moment where. I thought they had changed her eye color because this was a thing that happened every now and then in season one where because oh, right. Artemis's eyes are gray, every now and then there'd be like an issue with the coloring, like there'd been be a mix up. And there are a couple of like screenshots from season one where Artemis has bright blue eyes because things just got switched around for a second. I was like, did they change Artemis's eye color? And then I, and it was like really annoying me. And then I went through and watched like, was like picking out screenshots for the rest of the tra- trailer. I'm like, no, she still oh, right. has gray eyes. They purposely gave her blue contacts for this <laughs> scene. And I'm like, that's hilarious. <laughs> Just so yeah. that we can tell that she has right. technologically advanced contact lenses right. that can do that because superhero uh, science. Right. The two big reveals, I guess, are that, f- that one character is confirmed as Forager who I'll talk about in a minute, and he's going to be voiced by Jason Spizak. So we knew, we had the suspicion that Jason knew, quote unquote, from the photo that got posted, that he was he was in recording <laughs> sessions. Turns out he's voicing Forager. We don't know what happened to Wally still, obviously. They made a lot of comments about like, people are like, well, how does Wally's, you know, being gone affecting the team? And they're like, yeah, everybody's, this whole season starts off with everybody grieving. And if it's been two to three year jump, he's been gone a while, which is heartbreaking. But there's that. And then, hey, he's fine. Then, uh, <laughs> well, he's fine. Uh, Troy Baker is voicing Geoforce. Uh, so that was officially announced. So I think that that was kind of hinted at a little earlier. And then um, also uh, uh, Halo was confirmed. So it was not Solstice, it's Halo and being um, voiced by. Zara Fazal, I think is how you pronounce it, F-A-Z-A-L, um, is voicing Halo. And as I mentioned, she was really nice, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing her in that part. I love um, that Halo's costume apparently changes colors into like five different costumes. Because oh, after several cool. posters of being like, wait, her costume was yellow here, and then it's red in this one. And then if you watch the trailer and if you look at like her profile art that they released, she has like piping along her arms that's like five different colors and i'm like are you telling me that her costume changes colors for yeah. some reason i don't well, care the- what it is that's <laughs> awesome i love it already <laughs> well the original halo had a costume that was just like black with rainbows all over it <laughs> and so i think this is their nod to that like it was literally just like like a rainbow explosion off one side <laughs> I love it. So, um, She's also got a cool so it's probably there not to that. I, but if they make a mechan like a mechanical reason for why, like maybe what mood she's in or something else, or like be, what like she's, her costume's like a giant part of her, she's her powers personally, she's using. Oh yeah, what effect? Oh, that'd be really cool. Either that. I so it's like you either it's like what move is she using, and that affects what color or thing, what powers, or it's like she's a right. giant mood ring. Either way, right. I think it's cool. <laughs> Pick one. Nice. Well, so to talk a little bit about Forager, we talked to him. I, we talked about him a little bit, I think, in the last Intel update. Like the just a, some brief things, but the original Forager and his people were basically these humanoids that were insect. They're insectoid humanoids that that live on the surface or underground on New Genesis, where the New Gods live. And Forager had distinguished himself during a combat. That had involved the outsiders as well, if I remember correctly, because he say he dies in um, the comics saving Batman's life, but then in just a few years ago, I think twenty, maybe in twenty seventeen, maybe been just last, year, he got like a mini, he got a mini series, and it was took place quote unquote after he had died, he had basically regenerated and some craziness was happening with him, so they gave him a mini series. So in the original comic, even though he looked like a human, which is what I kind of always thought he was kind of a huge, just an alieny human. No, I did some research, and they were actually insectoids that were born from some virus that had spread all over the planet, and they had evolved out of that. And so they, Greg and Brandon, took that very literally, and they made him into this more kind of you know insectoid creature, which is really pretty cool. 
And he's always been kind of a more lighter or hearted in some ways or like humble kind of character. So I find it cool that Jason Spizak's going to be voicing him. I hate to say like, I'm like, do you get Jason in a character that in the comics dies heroically? <laughs> <laughs> like, is that his typecast now? It used to be he didn't get the girl and now it's that he dies heroically. I hope they don't do this to him again. No, it was that he always got the girl and then lost the girl somehow. Right. All three right. of his Cartoon Network roles. That's fair. Yes, you're right. Clone Wars, Green Lantern, Young Justice. <laughs> right. Every single right. one gets their love interest at right. least briefly. I sit corrected. I sit corrected. There is that six issue miniseries is on Comixology. I checked that out. We'll put the link to that in the show notes as well. But let, let's go over real quick. Uh, I, I'm going to go over the heroes that we see. And do you want to do you want to do a run through of the villains that we see sure. after that? Sure. All right. So <laughs> we definitely get we definitely get a shot of Geoforce. We get a shot, a uh, still shot of Princess Terra, who's like I mentioned, has been missing for two years. It said. We get Metamorpho, Katana, uh, Katana, and Halo, which we already kind of knew from the artwork, but we get to see them in action, which is cool. We see Static. Uh, we see Wonder Girl, uh, Impulse, and Blue Beetle. Impulse telling a terrible Wally joke. Um, <laughs> Someone's got to continue Drake. the legacy. Right. We do see. We do get a shot of Tim as well fighting um, Clayface. I think which half the internet is like it's Damien. It's not. It's, it's not, not Damien. Damien. <laughs> it's Tim. It's Tim with the hood. Yeah. The timeline doesn't make sense for it to be Damien. No. So we uh there's we also get a quick shot of Tracy thirteen, who it was also released information that Zatanna is training Tracy thirteen. She's kind of yeah. the sidekick now of Zatanna, which is interesting. We get to see Arrowette in action. Let's see, Doctor Fate. We get to see a quick shot of Doctor Fate as well. I'm gonna have you comment on that in a minute. We got uh <laughs> Captain Marvel and Flash. I'll go, uh, I'll go pull up my thing. Yeah, Captain Marvel and Flash, we get to see a quick a quick just a quick shot of them being Knocked unconscious. I don't know what's going on with them. As we mentioned, we see Wolf uh, probably in Connor's apartment. Uh, we see Big Bear. So we do see the forever people are coming back. We're also seeing, I kind of put him in the villains, but he's not really. I don't know what take they're going to do. But um, we also see Orion. And Orion in the comics is, is a, he's a hero. But it's uh, if you go back and listen to my Fourth World interview with um, Jeff Stormer, he talks about this where where Darkseid and Highfather had exchanged children. And so as kind of a peace thing. And so Orion is actually the son of Darkseid who was raised on New Genesis and is a hero but has temper issues. <laughs> and then Scott Free is the character that um, Highfather's son who had given to uh, Darkseid, and he was the one who became the greatest escape artist. So you can go listen to that a little bit. But we get a shot of Orion, so we definitely there's definitely going to be a lot more Fourth World stuff coming up. And then we see the bio ship. Yeah, I, no, pl- I, I picked that out in yep. my latest million three watch of the trailer. I, I saw it, but it didn't register to me that it's like same. I, I'm didn't like, register McGann's, the first few times. McGann has McGann has got to show up. Like, it got I'm not. I'm not one of the people who's like, oh, I haven't seen Aqualad and McGann, so they must be dead. <laughs> like, I, I just not really. That's not really like how my my fandom works. I'm like, oh, I'm sure they'll show up in some way. So when the Bioship showed up, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, that tracks Bioship, but. You pointed out that well, we haven't seen McGann yet. I'm like, oh, whoops. Oh, yeah. I guess that's true. Yeah. That's totally but, true. But like that that gives me like, like it wouldn't make much sense for that to be included and for her not to be. And also during the panel, one of the quotes that's been floating around for a while, I can't remember if it was Greg or Brandon, uh, but one of them said basically every character from oh, season yeah. one shows up at some point. Right. Uh, so I'm like, okay. I'm going to take that basically to include two of our core members who have yet to appear in any yeah. promotional material because yeah, I, I love them reason. and want them right. to be safe. Right. And <laughs> Young Justice gives you trust issues. <laughs> that time skip. What? No. No, it's fine. It's fine. But yeah, for people who are still worried about Miss Martian and like, I get it. I am slowly calming myself, but uh, <laughs> Bioship, we've got we got hope. And we have Bioship sighting. <laughs> Bioship um, sighting. McGann is hopefully in there. But you brought up Doctor Fate and wanted to throw that over. Yeah, because you a had, you had po- yeah you had posted something about the, some one of the fan theories, and I I didn't catch what it was. Because a thing a thing went down late on uh, like cool. Friday. Oh, really. <laughs> The thing went down. No, no, nothing, nothing bad, nothing too crazy. But Friday night, uh, after I had shared 
the trailer from the thing and everybody's so excited everything was going on on twitter uh robert scara from nerds on a roll uh replied to like my tweet about the trailer and was like i'm watching this trailer and dr fate looks like a woman is it possible that it's zatanna and I went back and studied this one, this one like one second clip in the trailer that we get of Doctor Fate, and stared at this for way too long <laughs> to try and figure this out. Because this is why you're on this show. Because <laughs> this is this is a requirement. Uh, so, so, it's, it's on your CV. Well, people may have seen it, people may not have, uh, but basically, and a few other people have thrown around this theory too. But what I said was that while it seems like a really interesting idea. There are a couple of reasons I don't think it's true. One of them being the Tracy 13 uh, that Zatanna's mentoring her. And I don't think Zatanna would be mentoring anyone if she was Dr. Fate now. She was Dr. Fate. But I went and did some Google image searching and found the screenshot from the trailer, an image of Zatara as Dr. Fate, and an image of Zatanna as Dr. Fate from season one. And the body type for Zatanna as Dr. Fate looks very much different from the one in the trailer. It as well, people are kind of throwing around that it looks more feminine. Zatanna has a very tiny waist. This <laughs> this Doctor Fate does not. Oh, okay. Um, and, but something about the more, color too. But or? yeah, more even more so than that is the fact oh. that every version of Doctor Fate that we see on the show has a giant high collar, except Zatanna as Doctor Fate for some reason. She's the only huh. one who doesn't have it. Um, I never noticed that. Yeah, all of the boys on the team, Zat- uh, Zatara as Dr. Fate, and like the flashbacks we get of Dr. Fate all have this giant collar, and Zatanna just has like this tiny closure around her neck and her hair blowing in the wind. And the one that we see in the trailer has the giant high collar, so I really do not think <laughs> it is yeah. Zatanna. There is, there, it could still be a woman. That's still possible, but I still think it's probably Zatara. I feel like that's too big of a plot point for them to do off screen. Yeah, probably. Uh, but if people yeah, people can probably. go uh, scroll through my Twitter to go find my comparing reference photos of different Doctor Fates to disprove a just completely innocent and innocuous question. I went sure. and did way too much research. I, I didn't even know what the conversation was about but this last time that I was watching the trailer and it was I was going through it. I thought the same thing. I was like, huh, he's got like, a, like, like the waist hip kind of thing looked more feminine, yeah. a little bit more feminine to me, but I was like, but that can't, I, I, I just dismissed it. I, I think was like, part oh, of it is me. also, I also threw out in that same thread that, the color it's a very wide shot like it is not a close up of dr fate and yeah. in that wide shot the color of the cape behind dr fate and like the armor waist piece thing that dr oh, right. fate wears are kind of the same color so they kind right. of blend in together isn't there a and- bunch of light behind him as yes. well yes okay yeah and it all kind of blends together and i think kind of tricks your so eye might be an into optical thinking, illusion yeah, yeah into thinking that because it's just kind of like a distant sketch outline sort of compared to like close up detail work on a character like that you're like yeah yeah no that uh, makes wait. sense <laughs> well well now that we, that we talked about some of the heroes then let's talk about so who we saw long list breakdown of all of these villains uh we got lobo with a new haircut because that's Lobo's essential back. Now. and yeah and connor's punching him in the face they a mean. lot a lot <laughs> a lot of punching we've got sensei we've got black spider Brick, Bane, Deathstroke with no ponytail. With no ponytail. I'm not sure I noticed Deathstroke and it might have been because he doesn't have a ponytail anymore. How am I supposed to pick him out in a crowd of masked villains? He had one defining feature. (laughs) Right. We've got... Couldn't be the the split face mask or the sword. It's the ponytail. No, it's the ponytail. (laughs) For sure. It's the ponytail. I'm on board. We've got Count Vertigo. We've got Cheshire who is the moment in this trailer where I shrieked. Audibly. I was so happy for you when I saw that. <laughs> cause I, cause like I'd resigned myself after like, she kind of disappears after a little while in season two. I'm like her and Roy have settled down. They're going to mm-hmm. be whatever. I have resigned myself that we're probably not going to see Jade in season three that much. And then it's just like, here's her in the middle of action, punching someone in the face. I'm like, oh, yay. <laughs> I don't care yeah. why. But you know what? Like speaking speaking of that, we haven't seen any of Crispin's roles. <laughs> oh, like we right? Stay no, because so Roy Harper. Yeah, right, exactly. 
So Red Arrow's not there. Arsenal's not there. Uh, Jim Harper's not there. Like Arsenal I, was in a poster art from last year, though. He was, but we didn't see him in the trailer. So, For so sure. he's there. So hopefully we'll get some shots of him, but we didn't see him in the trailer in action. So I'm curious. And again. <sighs> I also, they do such they they do such a good job with all the ensemble cast, but you, you definitely have to look at this and you're like, how many epi- like how, how many, many episodes characters? could like how many episodes does Wonder Girl get as a voice actress? Like how many epi- you've also got the outsiders and the regular team and the old team and the I love it so because many. I love the whole, I love the whole you know having this view of the entire DC universe makes me so happy. But also I'm like thinking about the voice actors. I'm like. Yeah. Your character could be in every episode, and you may only get like two voice roles. Like yeah. you're only in two episodes voicing them. Yeah. So, with we'll uh, side note on Cheshire, you may you have may- maybe have been able to figure this out, but me watching it, I like that you can't that they show her like completely taking someone down in a fight, but you right. but they're not masked, so you have no idea what side they're on. And I'm like, who's Cheshire oh, working fair. for? Who's Cheshire working for this far into the game? I'm like, because I want to know. I there they, are possibilities they do make a point there. of if I remember correctly they do make a point of showing because they also do because Raish is in there the rest of the League of Shadows is in there so I don't know maybe she's independent now who knows? <laughs> anyway who else do we see so there was our Cheshire <laughs> sidebar I really like Cheshire guys I love I love <laughs> I love her so much we've also got uh, Lex Clayface Queen Bee Livewire, uh, who's new? I don't think we've seen her yet before. Like this is new, I, and I'm making an assumption it's Livewire. It just yeah. looks exactly like Livewire. Yeah. Like so. at first we were like, "Is that Killer Frost? Is that?" Yeah, but a- she's absolutely. got lightning powers. Mm-mm. It's got to be Livewire. That's Blue women with odd hair <laughs> right. who are villains. Which one? <laughs> right. Uh, we've also got uh, Rachel Ghoul and Vandal Savage all here. Of course, and both of them were on the were on the like poster, weren't they? I think. Or was it? It was Vandal no. Savage and uh, it was Vandal Savage and Dark Side. Probably, I, think, I don't yeah. remember. Something like but that. who we don't see in the third season stuff is Dark Side, but that doesn't surprise me much if this is really just ripped from the first seven episodes. I'm not sure we'd get that much with Dark Side until later yeah, in the season. Yeah. That's my guess. No, episode one, we're going to Apocalypse. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. In media res, Apocalypse is blowing up, and uh, yeah. We solve that problem immediately. Rest of the season is yeah. actually just everyone like sitting down and having a movie night every single week <laughs> right. and being Excellent. friends, and there are no problems. <laughs> <sighs> we that's dream. why fan fiction exists. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and that's that's kind of a bit of the breakdown. A little bit of I, I don't know what will happen with you know like these new characters, Forager and you know Brian Markov, and I I don't know. I mean, we can make speculations, and what I think we're going to have to do with season three reviews is we will probably still have a crashing the mode segment, but that crashing the mode segment is going to be all us speculating on stuff that might might ruin something. So if that you, right? also depends on how the release schedule is, because we still don't know. I don't think Se- they've yeah, technically some, said. Because if it's they weekly, have, yes, but if it's all at the same time, maybe not. There was an article, there was one article floating around, and I haven't gotten any confirmation of this yet myself, yeah. but there was one article floating around claiming that they were going to do 13-episode drop, a pause, like a season pause, and then another 13-episode drop. So, but I have no confirmation on that. And that seems, I mean, maybe if they do, I guess that's great. We can just binge all 13 and then we can, we can do our show, which I'm happy to. <laughs> yes, uh, like, you you want to give us all 26? I'm great. Like I'm not fighting it or anything. I'm just thinking that seems odd to me, but I, it's also not outside the realm of possibility. I, got, I, I suppose. Yeah. I don't want to make any promises about how we're doing the show until we have more yeah, information. Yeah, until we know what's up. We may not know until the day it drops. And we were like, oh, okay, we've got all 26. Okay, off we go. Quick random um, question before we move on to things. With the trailer, because mm-hmm. uh, I know we've confirmed that Spoiler is in uh, the series. Was she in any oh, of the yeah. trailer, as far as you I remember? Didn't, uh, I went through and looked at every scene. Yeah. I don't think I missed anybody, and I didn't yeah. see Spoiler in that. And we didn't cool. see Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. So because I know because we'll like she was part of like the character profiles they released and everything, and I am very hyped right. for my stuff. I am very hyped, right, <laughs> for my girl Steph Brown. But I was just wondering because I because I also didn't notice her, and I was like, did I miss something, or yeah. is she not there? No, I yet. don't think I saw. Her. All right. Well, let's wrap some of this stuff up. I don't know if yes. we have. Do you have anything else about the trailer and the information at the? 
You guys I'm get, excited. This is a really long Intel update, and a lot of it was just me talking about silly stuff I did you while I was there. Comic Con. Con. You're allowed to talk about it. You're allowed to tell people and I be am. excited about it. It was fun. It. it was a little mind blowing, a little weird for me. I'm looking, excited looking about at, this trailer. Thanks. I'm No, I am too. I'm pretty excited about this trailer too. And there was there were a lot of trailers released at Con. I'm a little surprised this one is not getting as it, it frustrates me. I've seen a couple of articles on like, hey, these are the things that were released and uh, there was even an io9 article where they were like, hey, there was a great animation stuff released, and they talk about Invader Zim coming back and some other stuff. And I was like, what? Like, there's no mention of Young Justice at all. It's pretty frustrating. And it, hey, you know, take it with a grain of salt. We're biased, obviously. <laughs> but when you drop <laughs> a trailer a and it's one and a half million views in three days, perhaps you might want to mention it. Like, Maybe that's a little. weird to me. But yeah, there was some other stuff. I'm, I'm, People know that I'm not a huge fan of the live action DC stuff in general, but I, I really enjoyed the Aquaman trailer. Thought it looked Shazam really cool. Shazam looks great. Shazam looked really fun Hyped and entertaining. Like Cloak and who knows? Dagger got renewed for season two uh, and they announced Cloak it and Dagger is so good, I'm guys. So like, hyped. Yeah, Cloak and Dagger got renewed. It's real good, guys. Um, we're both been really enjoying that too. So there's some good. There's definitely some good stuff coming up, and um, and check it out. We'll see how the final run is, but all the kind of behind the scenes murmur on Aquaman says that um, it's pretty amazing. And for me, being like the aquatic gaming guy, I'm really excited about like maybe this will break the mold a little bit and make people realize that you can do underwater science fiction and fantasy and stuff, and it's not going to break the bank, and you can do cool stuff. So we'll see how that goes. It's your but soapbox. You will never get down from. I'm never getting off that soapbox. Deal with it. I'm, I'm still campaigning for more superhero rom-coms, so it's all good. Right. I understand. Right, exactly. So we have uh, one new patron uh, backer as well. Ian Wallace joined our Team Delta. Thank you so much, and thank you so much to all of our patron backers. Um, it's actually been helping us do a bunch of stuff. So um, we yep. uh, had some opportunities to do some things, and, and like being able to get into Comic-Con is like a, a, a premiere of it. Um, you guys helped us get there and be able to be in the panel, yeah. and we really, really appreciate that. So seriously, and then we have oh, and go ahead. Uh, yeah, just seriously, and also as the aside that we always say, like even if you are not a patron, if you can't do that, like we completely understand. But like, check out our Patreon page every now and then because we do have a lot of content that is early for patrons, but gets released to the public eventually, and you can mm -hmm. listen to bonus things and listen to stuff I've done at cons and other just awesome stuff that we want to share with all of you. Go go listen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think um, pretty soon, Richard Kruitz Landry, who's actually an origami artist, he's been working on a bunch of cool stuff that we've been seeing behind the scenes yes. that include like teaching people how to do Young Justice related art stuff. So he is um, still working on this project. But once he gets this project up, it will be released to our patron backers first, and then uh, it will be made public after that. It's really it's cool. It's really cool. It's magic. It's just magic to me. <laughs> As someone um, and who then does we, origami, I'm still just like every time you post something, I'm like, that's not, that's magic. What are you doing? That's not a thing. I'm like, yeah, I and fold he does paper all the diagrams stuff, for that's it. magic. <laughs> yeah, he does diagrams and everything. Anyway, it's really cool. It uh, and then we have uh, we have one uh, one review. I, I caught up on some of our reviews last time. If, yeah. if for some reason you feel like we've missed your review, please let us know because our review collection thing I set up, I'm... Not a hundred. I think I got everything, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. So please, if we've missed your review, please feel free to send us a message. I'd be happy to try and find it. Uh, this this review uh, from this comes from iTunes and comes from user Gibby Gabs Gubs Gibbis. I'm that was thinking. really good. That's that's what I'm going with. <laughs> Gonna get an angry message that's like you pronounced one vowel wrong. <laughs> that's right. Uh, but the review is called "Fantastic, Beautiful, Fan Fueling." And just says, love it, honestly, nothing bad here. It's just what I need. <laughs> like, I don't know if we could ask her anything more than that. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty darn great. Thanks. And, uh, and that's pretty much it for this update. An hour and a half later. I know. There's a lot. There's a lot. Hopefully, this will start to escalate and we can have more Intel updates as things come Jeez. out, too. Um, Fingers crossed. Yeah, some of them too. If they start coming out faster, then we you might hear just one of us and not both of us doing them so we can get them out. We'll see how it goes. Uh, of course, the best way to support the show is to share it with a friend. Um, you can also support us with five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts or your podcatcher of choice. Leaving a rating or review pushes us up in the search ranks and helps other people find the show. Uh, please continue to hashtag buy YJ Comics on Comixology. And if you haven't seen it floating around Twitter, because I know the YJ Wiki uh, was promoting it, but Comixology 
uh, is currently running a Teen Titans Go sale going on from now until July 30th. So you can actually pick up all four volumes for super reduced prices. Like if that has been your only barrier of being like, well, it's a little bit expensive. Just go right now. It's like I think each one is like six ninety nine or something like that for each volume. Like do it until July 30th. Go for it. Read the comics, please. <laughs> PSA for the day. And remember to buy the show somewhere online until DC Universe officially launches and you can pre-order the service now if you are so inclined. <laughs> you can also now use hashtag Young Justice Outsiders when talking about season three online. And if you want to help us get more episodes, more secret origins, more actual play podcasts, and more of everything else that we do, please consider supporting us through Patreon. For just a few dollars a month, you can help us do even more with the show while getting some great rewards for yourself. One thing I wanted to mention, too, that uh, I should have put in the outline, you can pre-order the DC Universe, but as we, as far as we know it right now, only if you're in the United States, which is, yes. I'm sorry yes. for all of, we have, there's so many international fans, I don't know what they're going to be doing with that or what the release schedule is, but yeah. hopefully you can access the trailer okay and some other stuff, but um, as far as we know right now, it's just going to be in the United States and... We'll let you know if we find out that changes. I'm so sorry for everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> but on that depressing note. On that note, like, <laughs> whoops. But anyway, remember. <laughs> Stay whelmed, everyone. Try Stay to. Stay whelmed, everyone. Yeah, try. It's all good. Stay whelmed, everyone. You've been listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed. Well.